Milling Through History presents The Hidden Secrets of Jingle Bells. It is perhaps one of the most famous songs ever to be played during the Christmas season. And yet, if you were to ask people about what makes Jingle Bells such a great Christmas carol, they might not be able to answer it, mainly because there is a question that should really be asked. Is Jingle Bells actually a Christmas song? Well, the funny thing is, is that if you look closely at all the lyrics, Jingle Bells has absolutely no connection to Christmas. In fact, there isn't even a single part of it that even mentions the word Christmas or anything related to it. The song was designed to be sung by a Christmas by a Sunday choir for Thanksgiving or to be used as a drinking song and was originally entitled One Horse Open Sleigh. Well, the author of the song was a man by the name of James Lord Pierpont. And when he wrote this particular song uh, in the 1850s, it was rather unique in its origin, mainly because slaying songs were rather popular in this time period of the 19th century. And so becoming published as a new slaying song, Pierpont knew that this would be a quick, easy way to make some money for himself. And it would be in 1859 that the song would be retitled Jingle Bells or One Horse Open Slag. Over time itself, people have dropped the One Horse Open Slag and just simply go with Jingle Bells. Now, when Pierpont wrote the, story, wrote the song itself, there were some notable parts to it that he had written mainly because it was more appropriate for the time, but later songwriters have changed in order to make it easier for people to sing, but also more relatable to modern audiences. For instance, in the song, we usually hear this phrase, over the hills, like for instance, over the hills we go. However, originally the song was, over the fields we go. A minor change, but perhaps something that makes more sense since people imagine slang and sledding to be only on hills. Oh, what fun it is, which is something that we can immediately, I'm sure, think of. Oh, what fun it is to ride and sing along. However, originally, the words were, oh, what sport. Seems a little peculiar to change, mainly because I think most people in the modern times that would be like, what's so sporting? Finally, in the chorus, oh, what fun it is, was originally written, oh, what joy it is. And again, minor changes, but ones which, when you try singing it with the original verse, it just seems very strange to a modern audience. But Jingle Bells itself, despite lacking anything related to Christmas, is perhaps the most recognizable secular Christmas song there is, not only in the United States, but around the world. People just happen to know it. And yet, as is often found in a 21st century society where they look to see if there's anything in particular that might be strange about it or something, even Jingle Bells has a few controversies attached to it. Originally performed on September 15th, 1857 at Ordway Hall in Boston, Massachusetts, the first performance of it was actually part of a black minstrel show, specifically through a performer by the name of Johnny Pell. Now, this is seen as, well, that's a minor thing. Other controversies have occurred as well. For instance, it seems that there may have been a little bit of an insider joke attached to Jingle Bells. In the second stanza, the term upsot is found. Now, a lot of people might not quite understand what upsot is, as it is a bit of a change of the word upset. But what it is, is that the upsot part of it is the fact that the singer of the carol talks about how he is going out on a sleigh ride with a young lady. And finally being alone and in private, they would be upsot, which means they're actually going to be, well, probably the best way to describe it is they're going to be very lovey-dovey with each other. Uh, and so it would be seen as rather scandalous as this would be one of those rare occurrences where a young man and a young woman could actually be alone together without any chaperones there to keep an eye on them. And so this is perhaps a bit of a 19th century little giggle and a wink that has survived over the years. 
Now, another particular point that's rather unique to note is that James Lord Pierpont, despite having been born in the North, had moved to the South, specifically in Georgia, before the Civil War. And when the war broke out, he would serve in the Confederate Cavalry as part of the Lamar Rangers and eventually the 5th Confederate Cavalry. Now, during his time serving the Confederacy, he continued to write songs. In fact, he wrote three Confederate songs. They were Our Battle Flag, Strike for the South, and We Conquer or Die. But perhaps the most notable controversy of them all is this question. Is Jingle Bells an original song? According to researcher uh, Kina Hamill, the answer is no. In fact, the song Jingle Bells itself is a complete ripoff, namely because Pierpont, always desperate for money, saw that slang songs were very popular and decided to take the best lines from multiple songs, put them all together as one, and then released it that way, knowing that it would be a quick way to make some money. It is highly unlikely even he would have expected the song to take on as much popularity as it did and become so enduring. But the general argument is, is that he, Pierpont never actually wrote any particular line of the song or even any part of the music. And that instead, by just piecing it all together, he was able to get really lucky and create this very famous song. Now, whether or not you find yourself feeling differently about Jingle Bells because of these particular controversies, it's important to remember it is, after all, just a song, one that is very popular and one that almost everybody universally can sing, namely because it is such a fun song to have. And so as we look at this Christmas carol, and I'm sure you might want to look at more to think about which ones you want to sing, just remember, it's only a song. It's meant to be fun. So... Why not go ahead and enjoy the spirit of the season and have a little bit of fun and sing your songs. For more information, please consider these suggested titles. Be sure to click on the left-hand side of the screen to subscribe to our show and on the right-hand side for our latest episode. And we will see you again for the next episode of Milling Through History.